Hey Rob, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this interview with me. Hi Kit, how you doing? I'm, we're here at the house in Nashville and uh, I got Lex here, man in the camera, helping me out. So you're probably aware of this, but the most popular question has been, was this staged? Uh, some people don't believe that Keith Urban randomly pulled you up onto the stage. Uh, many people watched the video and assumed that it was staged because it was too good to be true. There's a moment as you are getting on stage and Keith says something that sounds like, get on up here, Rob, uh, before he had even asked for your name. And if you go back and watch the video, at 26 seconds in, Keith says, look at that, like a champ. Come on up here, Rob. What did Keith actually say? Was it, come on up here, bro? Or, come on up here, dude? Or something like that. Look at that, like a champ. Come on, here, bro. All right. I've never heard that before. I'll have to I'll have to check the video out again. I haven't watched it in a while. Um, I would imagine he was saying something to the effect of "Get on up here, buddy," something like that. Um, but yeah, I never noticed that. I'll have to I'll have to check it out. <laughs> I think the reason why some people think it was too good to be true was because you look so comfortable on stage. Was that because you are a huge Keith Urban fan and you had visualized this so many times that it was like it wasn't the first time that you had done it? Yeah, I actually, so I, it's, it's a funny thing that that happened because I saw Keith Urban play when I was about 16, um, I think it was in Connecticut, Uncasville, Mohegan Sun, and um, I'd seen him play, and uh, it's, it's sort of cliche to say, but that was the show for me, it was a very life-changing thing, and um, it actually sort of made me want to pursue music as a, as a career, a way of life, so it was a very full circle thing for me to have that happen with him on stage. Um, almost 10 years later. So it definitely happened in my head a few times before it happened in real life. <laughs> Does Keith normally play a good thing during his sets? Um, I'm not sure how much he was playing that song on that tour. Um, I know that it wasn't in the set for that night. I don't believe. I don't think they were going to play that one. But uh, yeah, I'm not too sure about that. So what other song would you have performed if Keith had already played Good Thing in his set by the time that you came up? Oh man, that's tough. Uh, there's so many of them. It's, it's hard to pick. Um, I love the song, uh, I love Once in a Lifetime by him. I, I've always loved that song, so maybe that'd be a close, close second. <laughs> have you ever been to a concert prior to this one and brought a sign up but didn't get on stage? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd seen Keith, um, many, many times in my life before this show, and I think there was one or two times that we tried something similar, never even close to imagining that, it, you know, or thinking it would work, but, yeah, I think there was a couple times. So what happened after the concert? Did you have fans immediately, uh, people at the concert wanting to get pictures with you or give you high fives? Yeah, people were really, really nice after the show, um. Like immediately after, even when we were walking out of the venue, um, people were super sweet and coming up and just saying good job and, you know, things like that. A lot of people were asking if it was staged. Uh, I think that was like the most asked question that night, and um, which it wasn't, <laughs> I, I promise. Uh, but yeah, people were just super nice even right after the show. Um, I, we had a lot of people coming up to us and talking to us. So, What happened the next day after the concert? Or, and even the next week. Yeah, so we actually, um, we had a vacation sort of booked for the next week after the show um, that we, that sort of began the night of the show. We were hopping a plane to California about three hours after the, the concert. That was the plan, see Keith Urban and then go to California. Um, I think we got a plane at about one in the morning. And um, so, it was very, very sort of a frenetic thing. You know, we went right from the venue to the airport, and I didn't even have time to really process it. Um, I was, I was very much in shock still, and um, and I think that we got. I don't think that I. I mean, my impression of that night was sort of like, you know, this was the coolest night of my life, and it happened, and wow, I can't believe it, and it's over, and and that was it in my mind, and. Um, I never, you know, imagined even a little bit that it would spread around like it did. Um, and I don't think that I really 
you know, I don't, I don't think that I even realized that it was sort of, you know, was getting all the attention until I turned my phone off of airplane mode when we got off the plane, and um, my phone just completely blew up, and uh, a lot of messages, a lot of, you know, followers and stuff like that, and I think it was my girlfriend's dad was saying that, like, there was a radio station that was trying to get my name or something, so that was the point where I sort of realized, oh my gosh, this is, you know, sort of spreading around, and uh, that's when it started to get kind of crazy. When did you do your first TV appearance or radio interview? Tell me about that. Um, we, I did mostly radio stuff, and um, it was actually the following week after the concert that we were staying in California. Um, I had a lot of people get in touch with me and um, want to talk to me, which is really, really cool. You know, I didn't imagine that that many people would just be interested in it and want to talk, so it was very nice. And, um, yeah, there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of cool people. It was very, very early. We were on California time, so there was a lot of like 4 a.m. interviews, you know, which was cool. You know, it was just cool to be doing it. But we talked to some cool people. I, I did Bobby Bones, which was absolutely killer. That was very fun. So, how long did it take you to decide that it was time to capitalize on that moment and move to Nashville? What triggered that? Oh man, I think. I mean, I'd always wanted to go to Nashville ever since I was like 16 years old um, and I think that that was just you know once that happened and the video spread around like it did um, it got me in touch with some people that lived in Nashville and a lot of people from there had seen it I guess and, um, <clears throat> and in my mind it was just sort of like you know very very quick decision let's just go now <laughs> sort of a reason to go sooner so I have another video of you getting on stage with Switchfoot. So tell me the story of seeing Switchfoot. Is it pretty much similar to the Keith Urban concert uh, where you take a sign and you get up on stage or was something different? Um, yeah, so we, um, it's funny, it actually comes back to the, the week after the Keith Urban show in California. We, um, we saw Switchfoot play. Switchfoot's my favorite band and we saw them play um, on a beach actually at this festival called the Broam. It's this fantastic festival they have every year. Um, to It sort of benefits homeless youth in San Diego and it's this big big music festival on the beach with a lot of people on the bill and Switchwood headlines it and um, we ended up meeting a few mutual friends on the beach who knew some of the guys from Switchfoot and becoming friends with them and we ended up just sort of hanging with um, a guy called Drew Shirley who plays guitar for Switchfoot. Um, on the beach after the show and we sort of started talking to him and he um somehow the video through somebody had come up of, of the thing that had just happened with Keith Urban and um he thought it was really cool and I think it was actually a couple months after I think October when they came to Nashville and um Drew actually got in touch with me over Instagram and sort of said hey man come down to the show and you know um I showed up and it just sort of came together really quick like that very, very, very cool of him to do that, so thanks, Drew. <laughs> what are you doing now in Nashville? Who are you playing with? Are you touring? Um, yeah, I've been, I've been, thank God, I've been playing more than I thought I would ever be able to. Um, I've been able to get out and tour a little bit. Um, I've been playing a lot with an artist called Cody Purvis, who's a really cool uh, sort of up-and-coming country artist. Um, and I've done a little bit of... Uh, Sort of a few shows with a guy called Bucky Covington, who's on American Idol, um, a couple of years back. Very, very cool guy, very fun to play with. So, yeah, I've been getting to play, um, which is more than I thought I'd be able to, you know, I, I, it's Nashville, so I wasn't sure what to expect when I got here, but it's been very, uh, very fun. Do you have plans to do more? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, I just, I just want to keep playing, you know, I play for more and more artists and, um, you know, I'd eventually like to get my own band together some, at some point, but, um, just keep playing. I mean, I'm still getting used to the idea of, of doing what I love to do as a job and as a way of life. So it's, uh, it's been very, very cool. So yeah, just keep playing. <laughs> hey Rob, thanks very much for taking the time to do this interview with me. Uh, I wish you luck in the future. I hope I get to talk to you again soon. And uh, I, I hope this interview clears up a few things for your fans and fans of Keith Urban. I really appreciate it, man. Thanks. Yeah, thank you again, Kit, for letting me do this and uh, for 
having me and um, doing the video interview with me. And I hope it, I hope it's uh, to your liking. Let me know, and um, we'll be in touch.